This is crazy news for anyone dealing with iron deficiency. New research shows that there is a safer and more effective way to treat it without any type of iron supplement. The key player in all of this is a natural protein called lactoferrin that you can actually buy as a normal supplement. To help you understand the significance of all of this, let me explain the problem with the standard approach to treating iron deficiency anemia. So iron is essential, everyone knows this. It helps hemoglobin in red blood cells carry oxygen, it helps your body create energy, and it supports your immune system. If you don't have enough iron, your cells can create ATP, and you start feeling tired, short of breath, and get chronic fatigue. All the classic signs of anemia. Because of that, most doctors do a simple blood test. If serum iron or maybe ferritin is low, the standard advice is to just take an iron supplement, and they often don't even specify the form. So most people will go with something cheap like ferrous sulfate, which can create all kinds of side effects like constipation or stomach cramps. It's also very prone to oxidation, so basically like rust forming inside your organs. More on that later in the video, because this stuff really drives inflammation like crazy. So this is where lactoferrin comes into play. It's a natural iron binding protein that's found in human milk and, and also in very small amounts in your tears and saliva. It's also available as a normal supplement that comes from cow's milk, but until recently its importance for iron deficiency hasn't really been understood and I still know way too many people who have never heard of it, which is why I made this video. You see, several studies have now compared lactoferrin to standard iron supplements and the results are amazing. For example, in one randomized controlled trial done with 100 pregnant women, half were given 520 milligrams of ferrous sulfate once a day, and the other half was given 100 milligrams of lactoferrin twice a day. After 30 days, they measured the blood iron markers, so hemoglobin, ferritin, and serum iron, and in both groups, the markers improved at the end of the trial pretty much to the same degree, but the lactoferrin group had way fewer side effects and the participants felt a lot better taking it. So to quote the researchers' conclusion, the results show that bovine lactoferrin has the same efficacy as ferrous sulfate in restoring iron deposits with significantly fewer gastrointestinal side effects. Another meta-analysis even went so far as to say lactoferrin displays superior effects compared to ferrous sulfate in terms of improving iron status. And compared with ferrous sulfate, lactoferrin supplementation reduces circulating inflammatory cytokines. Now, the second part about the inflammation markers also going down is crucial. Why? Because low iron in the blood does not always mean that you truly have too little iron in your whole body. In fact, some people with low iron on a normal blood test actually even have plenty of iron stuck in their tissues in a form that their body can't access. This is called iron overload or iron toxicity and especially common in men and postmenopausal women because they don't have the regular blood loss of younger women. By the way, I'm not talking about hemochromatosis, which is a genetic condition. Instead, I'm talking about lifestyle-related overload due to bad iron handling and too much intake. Think of it like a sailor stuck at sea. He has all the water around him, but can't really use it because it's in an unhealthy form. Let me break this down into numbers to really understand what I mean. We know that the body needs around 25 milligrams of iron every day, but most of that should come from the recycling of old red blood cells, which is done by something called the reticuloendothelial system. That means under normal conditions, most people should only need around one milligram of new iron from food per day, which is super easy to get if you eat meat a few times per week. The problem is that when you get more iron than that, the body holds onto it. Because back in prehistoric times, people would often lose blood. So through injuries, infections, parasites, and it was hard to get enough iron just from food. So our bodies adapted to this by becoming very efficient at recycling and storing iron. What that means is that many people, especially men in developed countries, who have low blood iron markers, aren't always truly iron deficient. In fact, they're more likely to have too much iron in their bodies in a bio-unavailable form that cannot be accessed. It's basically hidden iron stuck in tissues where it can't be used. And because access iron is so reactive, it causes damage through oxidative stress and inflammation. To quote George Brewer, one of the leading researchers on this, normal levels of iron may be healthy during the reproductive years, 
but they appear to be contributing to disease of aging and possibly the aging process itself. It's clear that oxidant damage contributes to many of the diseases of aging, such as atherosclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's diseases, diseases of inflammation, diseases of fibrosis, diseases of autoimmunity, and so on. If you're new to this, I have a bunch of videos on iron overload that will be linked in the description. But the purpose of this one is to highlight how much of a breakthrough lactoferrin really is for this. It basically solves both sides of the iron problem. If you're very low in it, then it helps you absorb and utilize iron better. But if you have too much iron, so iron overload, then it helps you bind to this excess iron and make it less toxic. And we know this works because lower inflammation markers were measured in the studies that I quoted before. So it addresses the root issue, which is poor iron metabolism, instead of just dumping more iron into your system. And taking it is also fairly straightforward. Again, most studies use dosages around 100 to 200 milligrams per day, often split into two doses, for example, 100 milligrams in the morning and then 100 milligrams in the evening. And it's recommended to take it on an empty stomach about 30 minutes before a meal. This seems to improve absorption. If you have a milk allergy, this shouldn't be a problem either because quality lactoferrin supplements have very little lactose. Just make sure it's highly purified. Also, there are two forms you need to be aware of. Normal lactoferrin, which is about 10 to 20% iron saturated. So the proteins carry some iron with them. The rest, so 80 to 90% is iron free and will have empty binding sites that can grab and bind free iron from its surroundings. And then you also have apolactoferrin, which is completely iron free. It only has empty binding sites. In theory, apolactoferrin is better for iron overload, but it's also way more expensive. So if your budget is tight, a high quality normal lactoferrin supplement should also do the trick, since it still has a majority of empty binding site proteins. Of course, if you are a very difficult case, definitely discuss this with your practitioner based on your individual situation. When doing this, your goal should always be to improve your whole body iron recycling system. For decades, we treated low iron blood levels almost exclusively by adding more iron, usually in forms that irritate your gut and can cause long-term buildup that drives chronic inflammation. But now we know that a big part of the problem is how the body handles iron, not just how much it gets. Again, based on the available data, lactoferrin is probably the best way of getting started. If you want more info on this, all the related videos and resources will be linked in the description, together with my programs and other free resources that you should definitely check out. They will help you understand the full picture and give you a roadmap to restore your energy without risking iron toxicity.